Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the return of the Thursday night videos. I'm actually back now competing in matches. I've had a few weeks off where I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes as regards fishing, as regards my videos, and as regards some business projects that I'm working on as well. I'm now back competing. This is the Thursday night vlog and I've got some incredibly exciting news for the channel and hopefully you'll be pleased to hear what's coming up over the next few weeks. Well, a lot of you will probably already know that we've been away in Spain competing in the Iberian Masters. I will be uploading that video onto this channel over the next few days. As you can imagine, there's six days worth of footage there, so that's going to take a little bit of time to edit and put together and put together for you and get it uploaded onto YouTube. But that will be coming onto this channel over the next few days. So if you don't want to miss out on that, hit that subscribe button. We've also began fishing the New Fish Southfield Spring League. It's really hotting up now. We've just fished round three. Round one was filmed as a live match for you. And again, if you don't want to miss any of those future matches, just hit subscribe. If you didn't see that video, I'll put the link directly underneath this video for you. But the league table is now hotting up. I've had a good start already. I'm on four points from three matches, which puts me in a great position. And all the remaining matches will be filmed and uploaded onto this channel. So if you don't want to miss out on those, make sure you hit that notification bell that way you'll be notified every time one of those videos is uploaded what I'm also going to do as an added bonus for you is the match has been fished over six rounds and what I will do is when the league is over regardless of the result I will put all all footage from the league that's every round that I've fished I'll put it all together in one big video for you and obviously I'll put snippets of the league table as we progress through the competition so if you know if you don't want to watch the individual matches you can wait while the end of the league I'll put it together in one big monster epic video for you so you can watch the league from start to finish and obviously that'll include all my thoughts and tactics throughout the series as well as the overall result as well so hopefully you'll enjoy that when that's uploaded to this channel at the end of the series I've been getting loads of questions coming in about all sorts of different topics obviously quite a few about the Iberian Masters so thank you for sending those in I won't really go into detail on those because I think a lot of them certainly are going to be answered in the full length video when it's uploaded in a few days time so when you've watched that video if you've still got some questions that you want to know about the event or the you know uh, the the style of fishing that we were doing over there or any sort of um you know questions relating to that event then obviously when you've seen the video if they are still remaining then please send me a message and i'll do my very best to answer them for you a lot of the questions as well I've been getting in have really been about Southfield and the way that we've been fishing there. Now, as you can appreciate, we're only halfway through that league, so I don't want to give away too much, but there are a few little key details that aren't really secrets, but the things that sometimes get overlooked. So I'll quickly answer those questions now for you, and then straight after that, I'll obviously give you the piece of what I regard as um, probably the biggest bit of news about this channel ever since it started so hopefully you'll stick around for that so this is just a quick fire answer to some of the questions that I've been getting over the last couple of weeks one of the key questions I keep getting asked about is the feeders that we're using at Southfield Reservoir now I'm gonna pop this camera on for you Basically, there are only two really styles of feeder that I've been using over, the, you know, at, at Southfield Reservoir. It really revolves around uh, rocket style um, horizon feeders. Okay, there are lots of different styles out there. I totally appreciate that. But the ones I've been using are the Matrix ones. I've been using two different styles or two different versions. I've been using the original and I've been using the new version. Now, in the next video that I'm going to upload after this, which is the live match um, footage from round three I do actually talk about this at the end of the match whilst I'm still on the bank and quickly explain to you why I've been using both versions but I can quickly go over those now for you now the original version if I switch to this camera you'll be able to see it should be able to see it okay that is the original version okay now I don't know how old that version is probably two well three years old I think and what I've been doing is I've been using that version really to feed the peg uh, and if I wanted to um, 
create any sort of activity in the peg. Now the reason why I like this feeder, obviously the style is fantastic as regards casting accurately uh, and casting in a straight line even when you've got a crosswind and that sort of thing. But the reason why this is really good for um, creating a bit of activity and feeding your peg initially is because of the fine wire mesh on this feeder. That allows water access to the grommet really, really quickly. So if you just want to quickly feed, and as soon as the feeder hits the surface or hits the um, reservoir bed, then you can quickly empty it and it empties really, really nice and quickly. The downside to this feeder on some areas at Southfield are that if you drill certainly at the top end of Southfield, right peg 65 upwards and higher, the bottom can be very, very soft and silty. So you might find, depending on the weight of feeder that you're using, obviously that this style feeder might sink into that really soft bottom a little bit too much. And on some occasions you might find that it's picking up um, debris and bits off the reservoir bed. So that has been a great feeder just for kind of feeding the peg, create a bit of activity, uh, and it empties really, really quickly. As regards actual fishing, I've actually been using the, more often than not, the new version. Okay, now this is the new version. I'll switch to the other camera for you. This is the new um, Horizon version. Um, it's basically a, an updated version of the original one. Um, and as you can see, the style is quite different. You know, the design is different. Obviously, it's very, very good for cutting into the wind. That's why it's designed the, the way that it is, in the shape that it is. Um, but because, it's it's it, it's it's lighter obviously the weight at the bottom isn't lighter but because there is a lot more surface area here because of the plastic and not the fine mesh that can actually sit on a soft silty bottom really really well you wouldn't believe it i mean i tried it in the first round and i couldn't believe i expected it to make a difference but i didn't think it would make as much of a difference as what it actually did um it sits on the silt really really nicely um it doesn't empty as quickly as you can appreciate because water can't get to the ground bait quite as quickly as the original version but for actual fishing this feeder has been fantastic the shape and design of the feeder has allowed me to get out to the range that i've required which has usually been around 50 meters even with a crosswind it, this cuts into it really well and it sits on that soft bottom really really nicely and if you are a fan of moving the feeder as well this style feeder because it doesn't dig in and go into that soft silt you can move the feeder along the bottom really nicely if that's what you want to do. One of the other questions I got asked about was kind of um, the rangers that have been fishing. Now I haven't been fishing Southfield uh, much recently at all but obviously I see all the match results on Facebook because Andy Renton and Mick Axon always put the results up and they usually put the weigh sheets up as well and the full results so you get an idea and you get to see the weights that have been caught in each section. I don't think there's any rule of thumb um, with fishing ranges at Southfield. It's very much a, um, a seasonal kind of thing. Generally, the fish in winter stay further out in the lake and in summer they come much closer in. And obviously you can rack up weights within pole range during the summer months when it's water, uh, when it's warmer. So I just think that's something that you need to think about. You know, you know, you might be wasting your time putting a really short line in winter because I don't think the fish come in onto that line. And vice versa, in summer, if the fish are likely to come in on that short line then you know you've really got to put that short line in to cover your options but at the moment um, the water's still cold so you know i mean a lot of the fish i've seen caught have been at around 50 meters so i think that has been the best range to fish at this time of year the other question i got asked about was braid or mono now this is an interesting thing because when i first started going to southfield most of the lads were just kind of getting into the feeder fishing. It was when the um, feeder world championships had just started and everyone was kind of, you know, trying new things out within feeder fishing. A lot of the anglers like myself had never even used braid before up until about six or seven years ago. I switched to braid um, and I've always used it at Southfield. I am currently still using, I use the Submerge. This is the 0 0.08 version, but I actually use the 0.10 um, just because it's a slightly, obviously, thicker one and a bit more durable if you are got snags in your peg and stuff um, but I'm still using braid on that longer line any range above 20 meters I prefer to use braid at Southfield now interestingly there are some anglers some very well-known very successful anglers who fish at Southfield and they're using mono one of the reasons for that is because it sinks a little bit quicker than braid does now on a lot of venues that's not an issue because you've got a bit of depth and by the time the feeder hits the bottom the braid has got time to sink underneath the surface of the water and so is mono. But Southfield is very, very shallow. It's only about four feet deep. So as you can imagine, you're only getting a count on, in some pegs, you might only get a count of one second or one and a half. And obviously there's not much time there for your, for your braid or your mono to sink. 
I don't really think that's an issue, but obviously some anglers do, so they pref they are preferring to use mono. So it's very much a personal thing. The only thing, other thing I can say about that is from my personal opinion is that if I was to put a short line in, any shorter than 20 meters, which I haven't done yet because the water's still cold, but if you do, like I would do in summer certainly, then I would fish that with mono, not braid. Purely because you're that direct, you're fishing for bream, and I just think that when you're picking up on good sized bream with braid, shorter than 20 meters, I think it's just a little bit too harsh. I like to have a little bit of a cushion there. Even with a soft rod, I still like to have a bit of a cushion there because some of the bream you hook at Southfield, the, kind of, the bites nearly pull the rod in, so you just need a bit of a cushion there. But that's just for me personally. So if I was gonna put a short line in, that would be the only time that I would use mono on the reel. Well, the biggest bit of news I've probably got to give you about this channel um, has been regarding my bait sponsorship. A few weeks ago, I decided not to renew my contract with Bait Tech. Bait Tech, I will always be very, very close to my heart. Um, Bait Tech, I don't know how long I was with them, probably four years. They were the first company um, that kind of showed any kind of faith in me and gave me a full sponsorship deal. Um, it was shortly after doing um, a feature with Joe Carras at Southfield Reservoir, just after I'd won my first Lawford Silverfish Festival, and I got approached by Bait Tech to sign a deal for them, and I'll be forever grateful to, to Hayley, Hayley Goldsmith, and, and Andy Neal as well, and Tony Curd, who are all part of the Bait Tech team, um, just for kind of taking me under their wing, and just kind of showing me the ropes as regards what it was like to be a sponsored angler. They never never gave me any problems at all, they backed me the whole way and it certainly helped me to achieve a lot of results um, and a lot of things that I've achieved over the last four years and if you're watching Hayley and Andy thank you so much honestly it meant a massive amount then and it still does now um, and I've had loads and loads of fantastic results using the baits um, and they're readily available as well which is a big issue for a lot of bait companies you know a lot of people out there are trying to get all the mixes they can't really get hold of bait tech i think has got a really nice spread and you can you know can get their their baits in in a vast number of tackle shops up and down the country so why did i decide not to renew my contract it's basically down to a business decision you know i'm very happy with where i am within my fishing um, but I've got certain projects and things that I want to do now to take my fish in and the time that I spend on the bank to another level. A lot of that obviously revolves around this channel and it revolves around my other video channel, Patreon TV, and it revolves a lot around uh, the features that I do just as a sponsored angler for Matrix and just kind of spending time on the bank. I need to up my game. I want to up my game and get better, get more results, get more titles. Um, and the best way I can do that is by spending more time on the bank. The best way I can spend more time on the bank is to enhance and grow this channel even more because this is allowing me to A, get out on the bank and film more, produce more content for this channel and my other channel, Patreon TV, but it, it also means that I can use this as a vehicle for expanding um, the range of videos that I can produce for viewers like yourself. A big part of that is for me not to be tied to one single brand of bait. Now, that is the decision I've made. I'm gonna keep this channel sponsor free as regards baits, and that is gonna open up, and has already opened up, because I've already begun filming for you. Hundreds and hundreds of videos, bringing you videos about the different types of ground baits out there, hook baits, boilies, pellets, you name it. You know what it's like when you go to tackle shop and you see how much bait and the variety of baits that are available. It's a minefield for a lot of anglers, I know it is. I hear stories of, of you know, of anglers coming back into the sport and suddenly seeing this vast array of baits out there. And it, it, how, do, how and where do you know where to start? I'm gonna be bringing you and starting a series, and I'm not gonna say it's just a one-off series, it's gonna be a continuous series on this channel where I'm literally gonna be going in tackle shops. I'll be showing you the tackle shops because that's a massive part of angling and it's a massive part of what we do about supporting your local tackle shops and I'm gonna be bringing them into this series as well. So I'm literally gonna be going into tackle shops, showing you the, the range of ground mates that are there. I'm gonna be going into each 
um, type of ground bait, each hook bait, and I'm going to be looking at them in detail for you as regards what they are, why they're designed they are, what the manufacturers say about them, what they're designed for, what type of venues you can use them, how much they are. I'm going to be showing you the prices of these, and I'm also obviously going to be opening up the ground baits. I'm going to be mixing them. I'm going to be describing them to you, what they smell like, what the consistency is like. I'm going to be showing you how to mix them or the way that the brands tell you to mix them. I'm going to be doing some tests in a fish tank for you so you can see how each uh, mix breaks down how active it is I'm going to do all that for you and I'm going to do it all on this channel for you so that you can quickly have a look at some of these mixes without you spending your hard-earned money five six pound a bag I know some ground baits are and I'm going to be doing a lot of the donkey work for you all right so hopefully that is going to be of interest to you it's going to open up a, a whole new world I'm obviously still going to be fishing matches. I'm still going to be delivering you live matches on this channel. That is what I love to do. That is what is in my heart to win matches. And I'm obviously going to be filming when and wherever I can for you. And so I'm going to be using a lot of these mixes as well. But I'm also going to be using these mixes on recce sessions and sessions where I'm not in a match. So I can literally show you the mixes and just see if they catch fish and what kind of species the fish they're going to be, what size fish they are and all that sort of thing. So I really hope it's something that you're as excited about as what I am. It's going to open up a whole new world of hundreds more videos, a lot more vlog style videos and I'm going to be showing you tattle shops from where I live and up and down the country and what kind of ranges of baits they've got in there and hopefully that is going to be of interest to you as well because you're going to see um, that I'm sure there are tackle shops out there, little gems that you probably didn't know about where you can buy all these products and where you can go in and get your fresh bait and get your tackle and that sort of thing. So that's the big news from me. I really hope you want to be part of this journey, you know, because I'm going to be learning as well. So I'm going to end on that note on this Thursday evening. If you don't want to miss those live matches from um, the New Fish Southfield Spring League, there are still three more to upload for you. There's also the epic film from the Iberian Masters if you don't want to miss that and if you don't want to miss this new series on baits which is like I say it's a whole new world I'm hoping it's going to be of interest to you just hit that subscribe button thanks for watching I really appreciate it and I'll see you all in a couple of days for the next video